It's back and bigger than ever. It's the unofficial 40 from Soonerscoop.com. Now, here's the entire Sooner Scoop crew. Carrie, Josh, Eddie, and Bob. All right, we are back. It is the unofficial 40 right here on Soonerscoop.com. The podcasting airwaves all across the world. And uh, we welcome in Josh McQuistian and Eddie Radosevich. Uh, Bob Prisbillo is uh, pounding away on his keyboard right now because uh, we've just had media availability. Yes, I know we said we're switching the pod to Thursday, but it's Wednesday. Uh, and we're doing a pod anyway because Josh has to fly out to California and Denver uh, to go see some recruits this weekend. Uh, Eddie and I will be heading down to Manhattan together. It's a good old tr- old-fashioned road trip. I'm kind of afraid to take him in the car. I'm kind of worried about what... Well, this is the first thing. Go, when you go to Manhattan, you're expected to get a great meal because the uh, pregame meal at the stadium is usually top-notch. Oh, it's so good, yeah. I don't know what we're going to get for a 2.30 game, though. Because usually, isn't it a, like an open like brunch almost? And it's usually really good. They had the best yams that I've ever had. We were talking about that this morning. I, I was it So it's yams. I mean, I guess you could call it like sweet potato. Okay. Um, That's like, what I referred to it as this morning was sweet potatoes. But Dylan I mean, was like, I don't think difference that there are... between yams and sweet potatoes. Aren't sweet potatoes I have no just idea. yams with a bunch of butter on them? I have no idea. But they were fan. Which, that's one of the things I love about November uh, is like you'll start going to stadiums like Texas Tech uh, always has a great spread. It's okay to start serving like Thanksgiving. That's the thing. Like Texas Tech one year served Thanksgiving. I was like, this is amazing. I was like, it's, you know, like this is like you don't have to cook. You don't have to, you know, well, it's bad to say you don't have to spend time with family because I like doing that. Um, but uh, and it was like I, I thought it was the greatest thing that ever happened. And like three people behind me, Barry Trammell was so pissed off. I think it's great. He was so mad. Kansas because, State has a great press box, too. But he was mad because... He he thought that Thanksgiving dinner should only be once a year. Yeah, Barry's wrong about that. And I would have no it was somehow telling. going to ruin his Thanksgiving. I probably should have said, well, you know what? If Trish the Dish cooked better, maybe you wouldn't have to be so upset. I would never say that about the great Trish. <laughs> would never go that far, but I can understand. No, uh, no, Kansas State looking forward to it. Are we going to have a potluck on the way? Because the 2015 season turned around when... They had the potluck at the uh, Will Rogers Airport. Yeah, I know. I mean, the 55 nothing shellacking is the last time that, that Oklahoma was impressive against Kansas State, to be honest with you. Yeah, no, it was. 100%. Then, I don't know what happened. The, was the last year the... Well, they were coming off the Texas loss in 2015. 24-17, that's when uh, Josiah St. John was tipping plays right, and all that right. kind of stuff. Uh-huh. Mike got axed. And then, uh, or no. Yeah. 2015 and then uh oh, and Texas, then they yeah. yeah and then they after the Texas on the Sunday night we had the emergency podcast that was a crazy week and then it ended with OU getting stranded at the airport and then we drove up there and stopped at the, the airport team. beat we the team beat the team who was flying and we drove yeah and we thought about stopping uh, at the airport and like waiting on him and then it was like no we did go we'll to the airport go. we did yeah, yeah. Manhattan's an interesting place because they had all their buses sitting out there just waiting for them to land yeah and no, they all no had doubt. OU stuff all over no them. doubt just and it a was crazy. And I think trip. they probably got to their hotel like two a.m. or something like that. And then it was an early game the next day. Yeah, I want to say it was an eleven a.m. game. I remember that was freezing ass cold, wasn't it? I don't uh, know. We, no, it was. It was. It might have been cool, but it was. Okay. I don't think it was cold. I just remember you all. You were always seemed to be getting into rain, full rain gear, uh, or freezing gear in yeah. Manhattan. Sounds like we might have to break out the rain gear this uh. week again. So. Well, it's going to be interesting, uh, and uh, it's going to be big because it's been a really interesting week. We talked to Spencer Rattler today. Uh, I you get the sense that the team has really rallied around him, and sure. you know it, it, it's. I'll tell you what I I thought today's session with Spencer Rattler was a lot better than the last time we spoke with him, and that was after the game on Saturday night. I thought he handled today pretty pretty what you want out of a quarterback. Yeah, we'll say that. It was, I mean, it, it was good, uh, and I thought everybody, we talked to Michael Turk today, uh, very interesting. He's a complicated fellow. He has a lot, it's not nothing bad, he just has an interesting path. I he mean, was he, asked 
kind of roundabout about being anti-vaxxer? I don't know about if he's an anti-vaxxer. I just don't think that he is uh, he partaken. He had to switch schools because he wouldn't get vaccinated. I don't know what you would call that if not an anti-vaxxer. I don't think it's technically a anti-vaxxer. I don't know. He just didn't want to get it. He's very religious. I didn't know yeah. that. Interesting story, though. Like, not punting in high school. Yeah. Played football in high school. Yeah. Didn't punt, though. Took a gap year. His brother Basically punted for Notre Dame. His uncle obviously was uh, off of YouTube. Yeah, to Lafayette, and then uh, ended up at Arizona State, and now is at OU. And I something else I didn't realize he has two years left. That's crazy. Which because of COVID, yeah. I don't think that he'll end up using. Like I would imagine, he tries to enter the draft he this keeps year. Hitting those fifty-two yarders like he did last weekend before the games and stuff. And if you guys get to the stadium early, I would recommend. Uh, Watching him punt during warmups like watching, and stuff. Watching Frank Thomas in a batting cage. It's like you can just tell that like the ball comes off of his leg a little bit differently than it does the other guys. Yeah. I mean, it's like a cannon almost. And then the ball, like the rotation of the ball mm -hmm. is different than it is on Reeves punts. I don't know. It's, it's just kind of weird. Hmm. Kind of cool, though. What's up, Josh? <laughs> What's going on, guys? Sorry, we just Enjoyed spoke all about things that you didn't even get to participate yeah, in all I, afternoon. I have nothing to offer on any of that. Uh, what I did want to ask is, you know, I, and obviously I haven't heard it yet. You know, I, I know it, it's fresh. Spencer Rattler, was it better because maybe he's figuring out how to answer the questions or he's been properly coached? Maybe a little bit of both. I mean, okay. I, I think he kind of just said everything as far as like, uh, there, there was one quote just as far as, you know, the offense of, you know, they're 4 0, but at the same time, there's still a lot of room to grow, that kind of stuff. And it's not, yeah. it's not like everything's fine, everything's, you know, been clean. And sure. That's all I think people wanted to hear. Did you feel like after the game, the real beef was, or, in, you know, and yeah, I guess really a focus on after the game, when he was like, I don't know why they're doing that. That was the you, you don't yes that was the number one like and I don't know if you listened to the post game pod but it was just one of those things it's like man you're not helping yourself like yep. it, the least you could do is help yourself in a way that doesn't almost instigate a riot with the fans it was I I felt like he was almost a person that was in shock a little like, embarrassed like, like that's he how didn't, he coped like. Like, he was yeah. just realizing, oh, shit, they were booing me. Like, they were chanting for Caleb. Like, it, it's like we saw it as it started to soak in, and it happened. He was he was just kind of like, well, I don't know why they were doing that. Like, yeah. And not like, I, I performed pretty well. You guys shouldn't boo me. It was more like, I can't believe these fucking fans are booing me. Like, I'm their, like... They wanted me to come here really bad, and they're booing me. Uh, I I think that's ex it felt like coping, you know, when he's like, "Oh, I don't care." I don't. I'm like, man, you you are not that type that just that like when Jalen Hurts said it. Okay, I believe it. I believe Jalen Hurts doesn't care about anybody outside of his own head. By the but, way, magnificent quote from Jalen Hurts after his loss. By the way, oh I don't god, know why I missed he, it. I I don't know why he couldn't have said that when he was at OU. Oh, no, you know the quote say. I'm speaking of? Uh-uh, I've missed Everybody it. Everybody looks. I haven't looked since I got the bidet. I guess you don't need to. Yeah. Uh, but, no. He basically said, like... He the, said, when you take a deuce, you don't sit there and stare at it. You flush it and you move on. Yeah, there you go. I like that. Yeah, that's... But there are some... That's human. There's, there's, there's some scat fans out there. <sighs> I mean, there are that's people who take so... pictures and put it on the internet. That's I, I think that was always my problem with him. He was so hard to relate to. Like well, he felt not, so robotic. That's not relatable either. <laughs> I mean, if you're trying to show us a side of your personality, uh, stop doing that. Stop like doing poop what? humor. That's where. That's oh no, poop analogies. That's where you're going, Jalen. I'm I'm ten. Dude, give me the poop analogies. I, I can <laughs> I can relate. We I can connect with that. Uh, so. Um, yeah, I mean, it's been a whole thing this week with Spencer. And, I mean, I know it's been all over the boards, and people have opinions one way or the other. It's been incredible. I, I think that, like, <laughs> we sat here last week like, how could this thing get worse? And it somehow did get worse, but at the same time, I guess, overall, you know, with the record and everything, it, they're still 4-0, and there's a lot to be played for. It's just, 
I don't know. It kind of goes into a, a very interesting stretch for this Oklahoma football team. And I don't have a problem with his teammates coming to his defense. In fact, I'd be no, worried if, it, if they weren't. I mean, yeah. we'd have a Bo Callahan right. situation on it. It would be. We've mm-hmm. joked about that. Like, is Spencer Rattler Bo Callahan from draft day? Like, it would not be a good situation if you didn't see people in his corner. And everybody seemed, even former players were coming to his, Kenneth, sure. Kenneth Murray was coming to his defense. Oh, did he? I, yeah. I missed that. Yeah. I don't know. Josh, I mean, just as far as a wrap-up from uh, last week in the West Virginia game, uh, it's from top to bottom offensively. It's just an awful product right now, and I think that, I mean, they would be the first ones to tell you that. It's just hard to watch, guys. Like, every time anything, you know, and I'm sure it's some of us, you know, whether it's fans or us as media, just being spoiled. We're so used to... Oklahoma takes the field, there's like a 70% chance they're going to go score. Like, and, and now you're like, are they going to get a first down? Like, is, are they going to, is it going to be three and out here? So, uh, you know, I don't know. Sorry, I have my dogs wrestling in the background. They literally just sleep pretty much through every podcast, but now they want to, they want to get after it. <laughs> so, uh, anyway, but, um, yeah, you've, it just, it's hard. To relate that that it fell off this fast. That, I mean, from last year where it seemed like they had momentum, and I know Lincoln Riley, and he's right. He talked about, boy, there's a lot of changeover on offense. There's a lot of new faces playing new positions. There's a lot of movement, and I get that. But these are really talented guys that which of them didn't you have the full time with? Like Andrew Ray, like people are like, well, Andrew Rame. They, they had all the time in the world to get him ready, and – the other night, he didn't look anywhere near ready. I mean, and I know I've been like, oh, yeah, he should be the starter. He should be the starter. He had a rough night, man. They, they abused him. That mess. Now, I will say that Mesador kid's really good. Sure. He's really, really good. So there, there's some there's some of it that you can explain, but like Anton Harrison, like you didn't know that this was going to be an issue. Like, he, I mean, he just doesn't look like he cares. He doesn't look like it matters to him, and that's – and I know others had talked about that beforehand, but this was the first game where it just screamed at me. Where, you know, he had that, that last possession where they scored the field goal there in the start of the third quarter. And I, he had the penalty and he had, you know, it just, he looked out of sorts. Like I was just like, I, I don't recognize that. Cause in high school, he was a kid that played physically. I don't, I just, I, there's so much of it I just don't understand. It doesn't add up. Well, and you were the first to kind of, I remember after the game. Eddie looks at me from across the the, the desk, and, he's, and he goes, have you seen Josh's grades? And I was like, oh, God, no. And then he started reading them off to me. He's like, remember, these are not out of 50. These are out of 100. <laughs> it's, it was so bad. I mean, but you were the first to come out and, and really say the offensive line was terrible. And I know you've been, you've been critical of them a lot this season. Uh, but when I went back and watched it, I think it was on Monday night – it's it's hard to watch, man. I mean, the the disruption that happens before Spencer Rattler can even drop back in his you know to pass the football, it's unbelievable. Like what? There's a lot of watching that game, and you're like, what can you realistically expect Spencer Rattler to do with an offensive line that is consistently that bad? Yeah, I. And and I'm not I trying to f- absolve him of any mistakes. No, mind, yeah, or yeah. missing reads or things like that. Uh, you know, bad zone reads, all that. Sure, all that stuff has happened. So I mean, he has to be better. But my God, he doesn't have much of a foundation to start from. Well, this was the first game where I was like, well, pass pro is not very good either. Like, I mean, in the first three, you're like, ah, the run, the run game's a little hit and miss, especially with the blocking and. The but the pass pro you're like they're okay it, it's okay it's not great it's not what we've seen in the past but that's serviceable they can win with that and then on Saturday you're like this is bad too like it just it's it's like they're going in reverse I don't I don't really understand what's happening and like I I put it out on Twitter I can't relate the offensive line I saw run blocking against Nebraska to the group I saw against West Virginia I mean Nebraska is a good run defense. And I mean, just shut Michigan State down last weekend. And Oklahoma dropped almost 200 on them. They couldn't do anything with West Virginia on the ground. And it just, they didn't hard even to, really try hard to understand. Though. I mean, 
Yeah, for Kennedy that's fair. Brooks not to have a carry in the first. Of course, <laughs> you know, seventeen play drive, nine minutes. I get it. Like sure. it, they took up a lot of the clock, but it just looks bad when he doesn't have a carry until you get into the second half or the second yeah. quarter. You know, I, and I don't think I'm the first one to say it, but it, it's something that I it's something that just keeps repeating in my brain. The offensive line isn't good enough to overcome Spencer Rattler not being great. Spencer Rattler is not good enough to overcome the offensive line not being good. And so they, they've got to – one of them's going to have to carry the other for a little while until, they, until somebody can get on their feet because he's not playing well enough to mitigate their problems and they're not playing well enough to take the pressure off of him. And then to add on top of all that, just how good that final drive looked. Like yeah. it was – you look at that Le- final drive, effortless. Yeah. and it's like, that's what I thought this whole thing was going to look like all year. Mm-hmm. It's just crazy to me. But I guess, like, in, you know, I've talked about this a couple times this week. It's just like, I guess at some point you do have to credit Rattler and the offense for literally getting booed on their home field. And then he ends the game going 15 to 16 and completing his final nine passes and six for six on that final drive. We've talked about his confidence to be able to do that. There's a lot of guys that would have. <laughs> you really folded. do have to a not lot, give yep. a shit about what's happening around you. Uh, uh, yep, a lot of guys would have would have folded in that situation. Now, I will say, talking to a few people, it sounds like Oklahoma did simplify a little on that last drive, which is understandable. In that scenario, you, you're trying to limit things. You're trying to make it as as basic as you can, so you can move as quickly as you can. But it sounded like they went to a lot of half-field reads where he was just looking right, looking left, and making decisions, and that's why he looked so much more decisive and better. I'm not going to say I know the ins and outs of that because I do not, but that is just something that was explained to me um, that they kind of simplified everything, not just for him. People will be like, oh, well, that was because of Rattler. That makes blocking assignments easier. That, that makes everything a little more straightforward, and that sounds like that's what they did. It'll be interesting to see if you see more of that against Kansas State where they're just trying to clean out the clutter a little bit and make it as easy as it can be for both Rattler and that offensive line. I thought Garen wrote a pretty good column in the Tulsa World, uh, I guess it would have been this morning, uh, just talking about like what Riley needs to do, how much of everything is on him as far as the offense goes. And, you know, I, I think that if there's anything that we've know we've kind of learned through the first four games, if Eric Gray's not that guy between the tackles getting him the ball out in space is one of those things that they probably need to be focusing on more. Yeah. yeah. That, I mean, had they had a more electric play than that, that screen on the right. first drive? I mean, that was And that was on that fourth was down. I mean, they had to yep. get that. Yep. That was – and it, it showed faith in him. I mean, to throw him the ball behind the line of scrimmage and let him go make a play, that's, that's some confidence there. Um I, you know, I, I thought there were a couple of stories that emerged. I still think, and I've said it again and again, Mario Williams, got to get him the ball as much as you can. I, and I feel the same way with Eric Gray out in space. He needs to be getting eight to 12 touches just wide. Just let him make a play. And then, guys, Mike Woods. Yeah. yeah. I mean, did OU just find their number one receiver? Because I, it it's, doesn't seem like it's going to be Marvin Mims. You listen to what Riley was talking about this week, about learning his team, kind of learning what they have, and it's something that you know he tried to say that they've done every year, whether you know the numbers and the production that they put out in the first part of the season, I don't think kind of backs that up. I think they've obviously played better. But uh, it's almost like they have so much, and I don't want to say so much talent because it doesn't add up to with what they're doing right now, but it's like, they want everybody to get enough touches in a way where they are almost overthinking what they're doing offensively. Yeah, that's not. It, it, there's nothing wrong with Mike Woods coming out with 12 catches if he's productive every time he catches it and he's, he's averaging 15, 16 yards yeah. a catch. Because it's like when you're we're talking about like getting Eric Gray the ball or getting Mike Woods the ball. Like as as you're talking about that, Josh, in my, back of my brain, it's like, well, how the hell are they going to get Marvin Mims the ball? Like, they need to get some of these guys involved, but it's like, how do you go about doing that? I mean, the thing about it is, is like, yes, it seems like everything is just screwed up and not at all uh, cohesive, unlike that last drive that you're talking about. But then you like, if you watch West Virginia's offensive game plan in that game, like you want to talk about a shit game plan. 
It was basically we need to get the ball out of the just a bunch of underneath throws out of the quarterback's over and hands over and over as again. fast as possible, and because, they weren't good enough to avoid penalties or yeah, uh, just bad snaps, bad whatever. I mean, like they tried to go in and win a snooze fest, but they weren't good enough to do that. It's it's kind of like it's it's kind of like the Iowa State thing, like how they try and play you. They they try and run the ball, uh, they try and control the clock, they try and whittle down the game. And then it's it's just how Iowa beat them. I mean, that's what teams are trying to do is use the short, quick, controlled passing game against Oklahoma and shorten the game. If if they made a mistake at anything, it was probably uh, abandoning kind of Garrett Green a little bit at quarterback. I mean, we say that, but if if I still think if the if the center doesn't have the snap infraction that backed him up, and then obviously the bad snap. I still think West Virginia wins the game because they're going to. They were still. I mean, it was outside the thirty, and it was second and twelve when they had that bad snap. Okay, well, if they pick up two first downs, though, yeah. OU only has two timeouts left, and they got the ball back with what, like three thirty nine left. They could have drained it all the way down to at least, you know, say they get two first downs. But they also could have scored a touchdown at the end of the game if they weren't trying to drain the clock too. Who OU? Yeah, the way well, they were moving. I, but the how much time would they have had? Like, I think. That my mentality in that final drive for OU, and this is obviously like revisionist history, but it's like if they get the ball, say they're down a field goal with a minute, a minute left. I don't know if they're able to engineer the type of drive that they they were able to. I don't have many pet peeves, but I fucking hate hypothetical arguments like that. Sure, I just no, yeah, I, I just completely hate get it. it. It's just, it drives, it's like nails on a chalkboard to me. And I'm not saying you so are I'm a right. nail. No, I'm, I'm just saying I fucking hate <laughs> hypothetical arguments like that. No, I mean, it, you could never, it, it, it didn't happen, so we can't say that, you know, we can't make believe that it would have or that it did, but it's just, you just it's, never know. It's, what purpose does that serve? It's just the way I'm wired, I guess. It's like, you want to waste time talking about how this team would have lost if not for a snap that went 25 yards into the backfield. Okay, well, then what if they wouldn't have gotten the uh, false start inside the three-yard line? I mean, there's a lot of stuff that could have and should have happened, I guess. Or if they or hit if, the guy in the back of the end zone. I think, say, if Jarrett Dagey hits a wide-open yeah. receiver standing in the middle of the back of the end zone. Yep. I mean, that, that's, Which was that's really, a catch throw. Like, really funny that probably wasn't on television. But And I, I told Kerry uh, after the game, Josh... Alex Grinch met Key Lawrence at about the hash mark as he walked <laughs> off the field. And was like, oh, okay, maybe that's why he hasn't played safety as much. Mm -hmm. and, and I thought Riley brought up a good point in the – and it's something I, you know, I think we all fall victim to it – is, well, he transferred, so he's more experienced. No, he's still a baby. He's still a sophomore. I mean, like, it's not like – and it, it wasn't like he played, started every game for Tennessee or something. He's still learning, and he, now he's learning a whole new defense – so, like, you get it, but it is easy to assume that he's just miles ahead of, you know, um, oh, I, I, you know, I, I'm trying to think of one of the sophomore safeties, but just some guy that's Bryson been there, you know, Washington. been in college. I think Bryson's third year now, isn't he? But, I, I mean, you get my point. Like, it, it I, and I, I get what he was saying. I think it's a really good case to make that Lawrence is still learning his way around and those kind of things, but. At the same time, that's why you got it. That's why you get him on the field as often as you can. And I, you wonder how much that's affected OU with these games being close because you know they thought they were going to get, you know, some players more snaps against Tulane or against Nebraska or whatever. So, and it just hasn't gone that way. I mean, it really makes me wonder how terribly coached those guys were at Tennessee, like Wanye <sighs> and Key. Because it just doesn't seem like they came in with a lot of fundamentals. No. Not at all. I think it's a little yeah. different for a running back. You either can or can't. I mean, you got to yeah. block and stuff. but Agreed. I mean, and that's, guys, we talk about, you know, everybody loves to talk about, oh, the SEC, the talent. Yeah, there's times where I'm like, yeah, that coaching, you know, like because you see these guys go to the NFL that were like afterthoughts. You know, they were third or fourth round picks out of the SEC. And then they go into the NFL and they're monsters. And it's just because they're finally, they're not just getting by on their talent because these staffs can win 
six or seven games just because they've got a bunch of freaks on the roster and not, you know, and they're not doing much with them. And Tennessee was as good an example as any I can remember. Uh, you can have a staff full of mediocre head coaches. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's no guarantee just because you're uh, on Nick Saban's staff. I mean, how many coaches have tried and failed that came off the Saban tree more than have succeeded? Uh, yeah. I mean, they're still waiting for the first one to actually beat him. Just an a uh, game. Kirby Smart's probably, well, I mean, I guess Jimbo Fisher won a national championship, so. Well, you know, and, and with Kirby... How much of it is, you know, I mean, just unbelievable talent. Uh, kind of like what I'm talking. I mean, like, for years, they've just slammed their head into the wall offensively. And this year, it looks like it's probably better. But that's largely because JT Daniels fell in their lap. I, I, and I'm still not sold. I, I'm, I didn't want to say it, but I'm, I'm right there with you. I'm not sure. Yep. I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. I I think it, they're pretty damn good. No, I mean, no they're, they're, they're very and, good. And, but that's the problem. Is yep. like defensively, I don't know they're how good they have are a chance every single question. game. Yeah, that yep. defense might be worth seven for you know two touchdowns every time they suit up. I mean, they've done all this stuff on offense after the Clemson game where they struggled there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and not say Clemson's and, not good on defense. But. Sure. I mean, obviously they are, but NC State moved the ball with some success. I mean, I'm not saying they ran up and down the field or anything. But there, there are teams that have done more offensively against Clemson than Georgia did. And I think largely, or not largely, at least to some degree, it's because of Kirby Smart and who he is. He cannot let, it, okay, we, we might be good on offense, eh, but we're going to play a defensive game because that's who he is. He can't be anything else. That's what makes Nick Saban unbelievable is Nick Saban was like, okay, if we got to win 49 to 45, cool, let's go do it. Like, he didn't care. That was... That was fine, and I mean, I'm sure it drives him crazy, but if that's the best route to win, that's the way he's going to play the game. A hundred consecutive wins over unranked opponents is amazing. I I was thinking about that, like, you know, betting, like, money lines, like, couldn't you just bet Alabama forever? And I mean, sure, you're not going to make a ton of money. But you just keep bankrolling, just keep making money, betting Alabama. You'll ne- I mean, yeah. like, how often are you going to lose betting Alabama? Not very often. That should have an inter. I mean, there's a, a relatively interesting slate of college football coming up this weekend between the two big ones in the SEC. You got the Friday night game with Iowa and Maryland. Uh, Oregon Stanford to a certain extent is kind of interesting, and then obviously all the Big Twelve games outside of Iowa State and Kansas. I think Tech going to Morgantown's interesting. All of a sudden, it's a top 25 matchup in Stillwater with OSU and Baylor. I mean, that's going to be a really telling game. I've been shocked to see that number. Like, it opened at four, I think. And five, it's been, I think. Or five. It's bet down to three and a half yeah. right now. Yeah. I thought it would go the other way. I think Baylor I, might be pretty good. I just don't. I have no idea what Baylor is. Like, out of all the teams in the Big 12, I have zero idea. Well, their quarterback is the Bohannon guy mm-hmm. that came in and got replaced by the kid that just transferred the uh, Charlie Brewer? Zeno kid. Oh, Zeno, yeah. Entered the portal. That had the game of his life. Still to this day, the Big 12 championship was Jacob Zeno's best game as a college quarterback. Although I think they tried to play him the next year some, and it just didn't work out. I don't know. But I, I think maybe they played him when Charlie Brewer was hurt. By the way, Charlie Brewer transferring from Utah. It's a pretty baller move. <laughs> I Four mean, games in, just like, I'm done. If you wanted to take a, like, I would have bet that his career would have been over, like, three years ago. I mean, that guy could not, I mean, I'm surprised doctors allow him to even play anymore. Sure. As many concussions as he did. Anyway. I think, say, it, it, it's sad. It's like, um, you're like, you don't know what you've done to yourself. He... He should have been forced to quit a long time ago. Yeah. Well, I mean, they tried to force Calc to to quit too, and he yeah. came back. Yeah, having yeah. a great year. Him and Mordecai. Yeah. By the way, I mean that is the other thing too. It's like, it's very confusing when you see Tanner Mordecai 
doing what he's doing at SMU. And he was very meh at OU, which surprised me because I thought he was a really good – I liked him in high school a lot. I, I thought he could be one of those real overachiever types, guy that just – just got it, and he, it clicked for him. And he played an offense that that translated pretty well with Oklahoma Midway. Was you know going to spread it out all the time, and uh, played with some really good dudes. Um, the kid that's at Tulsa now, uh, the defensive lineman that's a really good player, was at Midway. The corner at TCU that's so good was there. Um, they they had a really talented team, and boy, they just got smoked in the state championship game that year. Uh, who was that that just worked then? Was it that beat Wake Up Midway? It was. Was it Cy Fair? Was that Cy Fair's year? Maybe I went down to the regional final game, and it was mm-hmm. against another one of those. I want to say a Frisco team, but it wasn't Lone Star. Because mm-hmm. they played. It was. It was Cy Fair. I looked okay. it up. That was right. Yeah, but uh, man, but I mean, they just Cy Fair just hit them in the mouth, and they weren't they weren't made for that game. Um, but yeah, the like I said, I and I love the little defensive lineman when I saw him, but he was it's like five eleven, six foot, but he's exactly the kind of guy Tulsa should be recruiting. Um, just an active, good, good player. Um the heck is his name? Jackson Player. That's the kid's name. Hmm. So, I mean, you know, defensively though, against West Virginia, I mean every time OU would screw up the interception. Uh, you know, the, the, when when Kennedy Brooks got stuffed at midfield on fourth down, like the defense just turned around and just was like, "Now nah, you're three and out." Yeah, as much as we like to like bitch and moan about the offense, and rightfully so, I I think that the defensive side of the football they've taken a step each week. They've improved yep. each week, and you know, this week it was even kind of exciting to see guys like Brian Osamoa start playing pretty well. That's the question to me, guys. If this offensive line could come together and they can sort out their run game, and I'm not saying that's an easy step, but if they could find a way to do that, is it just people needing to accept that this team might win a whole lot and just do it in a very different way than everybody's used to? Because you can lean on that defense, you lean on the ground game, you play that kind of football, like that can work. I, it, it just, it's so foreign to all of us. That I'm like, guys, if that run game could go and then you get Spencer Rattler playing off play action, sure, you're not scoring 50 points a game, but you might be winning, you know, pretty consistently 35 to 17. I mean, you might be, you know, just distancing yourself because, you know, your defense basically just strangles people to death. I mean, I, I literally think Lincoln Riley probably faces a decision right now. Kind of like, you know, in 06, what OU went through with Paul Thompson as their quarterback. Uh, when they lost Rhett Bomar at the start of training camp, uh, they just became a grinded out on the ground type team, won the Big 12. Uh, unfortunately, you got beat by Boise in that Fiesta Bowl. Um, but never, like, never happened. Does Riley have to make a decision like, okay, we're going to play like all these teams that want to grind it out, like a, an Iowa State or an Iowa now? And does he have to make it like, we're going we're gonna to back our defense? And control the you know if we can't control the line of scrimmage on offense, we're just gonna have to try and grind things out. <laughs> I mean, no, in a way, I don't think that he would allow himself to get to that point. I don't either. I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but I know that the fans are sick and tired of hearing them say that they're close. And like I, I kind of walked away from uh, this week's lunch and like kind of with the attitude of. I don't know if he's necessarily lying about being close. From what we've seen, it doesn't look close. I rem- but I, mean, I think that they truly feel like they are close offensively. I remember after the Iowa State game last year when they went down one and two, uh, and Lincoln was about as frustrated as he's ever been just about the, the play of you know some of his secondary and just the way they played and the, and the plays they didn't make. Like, he was openly, like, just upset about the way they played. And then I remember he came back the next week, and his message was what it is right now. It's like, we're not that far away from being a good football team. And then they went to Texas and went all those overtimes, and then they started kind of clicking and putting it together. But the expectation was they wouldn't have to go through that this year. 
especially with their quarterback. But the offensive line has been so bad, that's exactly where they I mean, you're not fixing anything until you fix what's wrong with the offensive line. That's the problem. But defensively, they have time to figure it out. They're giving them, they're giving them time. And they're and they're and they're so good, they allow the offense to screw up and make mistakes, and nobody has to pay for it so far. I mean, the Tulane thing was just a collapse on every front. Kind of like the Kansas State game was two years ago. Sure. Yeah, that's been the thing that's been weird about these last two games. Last they year. haven't, they haven't followed the format of what we, you know, we're like after Tulane, you're kind of like, yeah, this is what OU does, and these last two weeks, you're like, well, no, this isn't it. I don't know what this is, but this is very different. So, I, I mean, again, Nebraska I, did have the ball at the end mm-hmm. of the game with a chance, but the defense shut that shit down really fast. Yep, they were gonna have to drive yeah. the length of the field. I mean. It it certainly wasn't what you would draw up as picture perfect, but but you had the ball, and that's all that matters. Mm-hmm. I mean, I don't know. I keep finding myself like trying to like the positive side of me wants to say like, oh, they've been in these close games. They've they've kind of faced some adversity when they needed to, and they've responded each time. But like the the negatives outweigh the positives when you're talking about that, right? It's because of I mean, because of certain situations they've been put into them themselves into these situations. I mean, look, yeah, lose. UConn's faced a lot of adversity as well. <laughs> right. <laughs> no, I mean, but going through what they went through playing West Virginia, yeah, it wasn't pretty, and they dropped a couple spots in the polls, but that did a lot more for them than playing Western Carolina did. Oh, one hundred percent. I mean, that yes. was just a joke of a game. 100%. And I think that, you know, somebody like Andrew Rain will be better for it at the end of the year than we probably realize now. But, like, even the offensive line stuff, it's, I don't know, it kind of rings in the back of my brain. It's like, if these guys truly are having trouble identifying stuff up front, it's only going to get harder this week. It's only going to get harder the next week. Like, that's the kind of shit that yeah, has to Kansas get... State, I mean... It has to get That's figured out. That's the problem. Out. Kansas State has kind of had their way with Alex Grinch since he's been the defensive coordinator. Uh, Skylar and, Thompson maybe has. Yeah. Wh- wh- That's a good question. What do you guys make of Kleiman's report yesterday? Kleeman, I don't know how you say that right. I mean, I I think he... A little gamesmanship. I, I would yeah. be... I don't know if shock's the right word. I would be very, very surprised if, you know, 230 rolls around on Saturday and Skylar Thompson's not out, at least trying to give it a go. Yep. If he's not out there throwing and warm-ups, I'd be stunned. I don't know. Did you guys see the video that uh, I think Kellis Robinette put out? I think Nate Fagan put out as well. Uh, pre-game up in Stillwater, he was going through, like, basically just dropbacks and... I mean, he wasn't moving left to right or anything like that, and I know that's important for the knee, but it still it didn't look like a guy that needs, you know, multiple weeks to get ready. Yeah. I mean, the thing about that, that game last year, remember, like, they had to put a bunch of safeties at corner. Yeah. Because they lost, like, their entire yeah. cornerback room. Yeah. And OU never tested them deep. They just played, they played back. They played deep all day. And oh, you just never tested them. I want to say that they they did once, Carrie, and it was a deep ball to Drake Stoops, and he got tackled at like the one, but it was brought back because of a hold, maybe. I just remember Sounds that game right, was yeah. that game was littered with penalties, and then obviously a 35-14 lead with three and a half minutes left in the third quarter, oh. and they lost. <laughs> like I I and and obviously it you know. I hate to bring the kid's name up, but it was because of a fumble by Seth McGowan that kind of changed the game, did it not? Yeah. I hadn't even thought about that, that that's who it was, but yeah. Man, I've wiped that pretty much that whole game from my memory. <laughs> it was just one of those typical Kansas State home games where you could tell the fans just didn't really care. And it just it happened... It was like it happened under the cover of darkness. 
Well, I guess if you want to go real spin zone here for you know OU going into this game, it's like I don't know how in the hell a team like Kansas State couldn't catch these guys' attention after the way that they've been treated the last two years by Kansas State. It, if you're not motivated for this one, there's there's problems beyond something simple. It, it's not a simple fix. Something is wrong with the psyche of your team if they can't get motivated for a team that has embarrassed them two straight years. Kansas State, I'm looking at the box from this game last year. Oh, you had 28 first downs. Kansas State had 10. Uh, where was the other? Oh, Kansas State was 2 for 11 on third down. Oh, you was 7 of 12. Oh, you had the ball for five minutes more. They did get after Rattler. They had three sacks. That's the end Rattler. of the story. Three interceptions. And three interceptions, Oof. yep. Uh, and Kansas State actually had more penalties. They had 13 penalties. Oh, you had 10. Kansas State is historically had 13 penalties had for 108 yards. That's a little surprising. I don't think I necessarily remembered it that way. God, that's an ugly game. They combined for 23 penalties. And then the game no. up, up in Manhattan two years ago was just... It was a disaster. I mean, they got down way big. And oh, then yeah. They should never have even gotten back into CD that CeeDee Lamb had the big run that kind of got him back into the game oh, at the beginning, of the, or the beginning of the fourth quarter, I believe. Reggie Smith screwed him over on the uh, onside kick. Remember that? Well. I'm kidding. It he wasn't, did touch it, yeah. Yeah. The, that player's no longer on the team. Who was it? It was Trajan Bridges. Oh, was, oh that's right. It was. Yeah. Oh, God, God damn it. it. All these criminals <laughs> that are costing OU. <laughs> so the last two on, years. If we see a, just a horrific mistake that leads to a loss, we're like, well, you might as well get put that guy on the blotter. That's, yeah, that's coming. I think so. Jalen Hurts didn't play well that game either. At, at the beginning. No, he didn't. Did, that game, is, as memory serves me, that was the first time that you're like, Okay, now I'm starting to see the difference between Jalen Hurts and the two guys before him. Like, yeah. You knew it was there, but that was the first time you're like, okay, I see it. I, I see it now. Until Bailey brought it up with uh, Jaden Davis today, I had completely forgotten that Parnell Motley got kicked out of that game, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I forgot about that. <laughs> I completely forgot about that. Was it – did he kick someone? Uh, Yes. After, after Kansas State scored a touchdown. Yeah. I want to say. That's – Ejected but for wasn't kicking. It, was it was it real bad or was it real kind of weird? Like I'm trying to remember if like he somebody it like he over stepped over somebody or and, uh, it was yeah. in the middle of a scrum. No, I want to say that it was just like one of those saw. things that like how could you do that? You just lost your cool for a second. He either kicked or threw a punch. I can't remember. I want to say he kicked. That seems right. Yeah, because I I just remember hearing kicked someone like. Like, who the hell kicks kick, somebody in a football people? game? Yeah. <laughs> Who's kicking? Like, oh man, it's been they've been interesting, entertaining games. I mean, since 2012, Kansas State's had OU's number. They've yeah. been him four times since 2012, 2012, 2014, and then uh, obviously the last two years, 2019 and 2020. That's got to just piss off OSU fans too, because like Kansas State and Iowa State have had OU's numbers at times, and they've never Oklahoma State's never been able to jump into that fray and and they, and they Oklahoma State doesn't say, usually that have a is, problem with Kansas State that's what I was going to say and in that stretch I don't think Oklahoma State's lost to either of them have they I mean they gave Iowa State their only loss last year uh huh before the Big 12 championship oh yeah well except Louisiana dead program Conference. can't talk about them in uh, yeah I I mean, again, you talk about, you know, we talked about, I think, last week on the pod where, you know, there was all these players returning. All, I mean, Iowa State was the poster boy for everybody's back. And they, God, I mean. That's Brock, college football Brock Purdy this year, Brock though. I mean, like, nobody can, under, nobody can understand yeah. why certain teams are bad this year. It's, Iowa it's State's, like, lack of detail in special teams is maybe one of the more shocking things Yeah, I said they should make the there. five-star culture T-shirts. But in parentheses, they should just say accept special teams. I mean, yeah, it is. Just kind of inexplicable just how bad they are. The Ebner that, I mean, kid is really good, though, for Baylor. He is. 
Th- that's the stuff that teams like Iowa State win with. Right. The little details, the little things they're better at than you are because they know they don't have the talent, so they've got to make up the difference in spots like that. Except that in all of their biggest games, they're always terrible in special teams. I, it's weird. All their losses have come back to some type of special teams yeah. error. They're shocking losses or just tough losses. There's usually something weird that happens. Better. And I guess on the other side of it, it's like, you know, last year with OU, uh, they had the kickoff return for them that got them back in the game. Yeah. They don't even have a coach designated as, like, director of special teams or special teams, you know, responsible. There's nobody amongst their coaches listed as such. Special teams coordinator. We'll blame, uh-huh. Matt, we'll yeah. blame Matt Campbell on for that. Um, by the way, the good folks at Dead Soxie send a special shout-out to all you OU fans. Uh, you guys bought out all of the Maker Bayfield socks. And I did send a note said, hey, are you getting those back in stock? And it was like, yes, we will have those back in stock. I don't know that they've ever done it. But, yeah, they, they love the partnership uh, with OU fans. They love the, the what you're buying out there. Uh, and remember, you can use uh, the code BOOMER, uh, our special code, to get 20% off uh, of anything. It doesn't have to be college socks. It could be the no-shows. It could be whatever. Um, and you can go on there, enter that promo code. There are a couple restrictions, I think, on some like the collaborations, uh, but boardroom, no shows, whatever, uh, 20% off with that code Boomer. Uh, and we're even helping the OSU fans, uh, use that code, uh, Pete to get 20% off if you want the uh, OSU socks, which they just released a, a collection of their socks as well. So we appreciate everybody supporting our sponsors who support the podcast, uh, and just blowing it out and, and making those uh, Maker Bayfield, 8-bit Maker Bayfield socks sell out. What was it, like less than two weeks? Yeah, I think so. The power of the pod. Sell, sell, sell. We're pretty big time. Uh, so, Eddie and I will be having an interesting weekend. Um, we're going to try and drive back after the game, which means we'll be doing the Eskridge Lexus postgame pod from my Eskridge Lexus Lexus. It's going to be beautiful. And I think I've decided I'm going to drive just because I have Sirius XM and I would like to listen to games. Sure. Is this guy, Yeah, this would be the first road trip. Yeah. And the new one. I like yeah. it. Not going to lie, not broken up to not have a visitor list to compile for a week here. This is that is okay to not have I was hitting up guys for like the fifth straight week. I'm like, "I'm really sorry, man. I'm just trying to check." And they're like, no, it's cool, man. I got it. And, I mean, most, most of the guys were coming for, like, the third straight week. But I was like, let's, let's break this up a little bit here. A little road game didn't hurt anybody. Well, and you Josh couldn't wait get to, two to weeks escape his reprieve, family either and go to two different places this weekend instead of just one. Uh, I am all over the map. I am. Yeah, I, I'm going to cross four time zones. Feeling pretty good about that. So, um, I mean, technically I'm only in three, but I'm going to cross the line four times. So, that's exciting. Um, I guess do we want to talk about that or do yeah, we, let's, wait, yeah, let's, okay. do it. let's yeah, just start there. Sure. You want to start? Are you going uh, Cali first? Yeah, uh, Thursday going to go see uh, Los Alamitos, which you know everybody knows means Malachi Nelson means Makai Lemon. Uh, you know, a couple of Malachi, obviously Oklahoma's five star quarterback commitment, Makai Lemon, elite wide receiver commitment, and now my first chance to see DeAndre Moore in person, the uh, the recent uh, wide receiver commitment as well. So. Uh, Los Al should be a lot of fun to watch. I mean, you talk about one of the nation's elite young quarterbacks throwing to two of the best wide receivers in the country all in the same field. That's uh, That should be pretty good to watch, pretty easy um, video highlights to make. And, uh, make sure, then that, make oh, sure when, you, when you get out there that you boo Malachi Nelson to make him feel welcome but, you know, yes. at Oklahoma. I, w- we want Arch? Is that what I go with? We want Arch. Yes, that'd be perfect. Yeah. yeah. Okay, got it, got it. Just one lone guy in the corner of the end zone just going, <laughs> we want Arch. We want Arch. And they'll probably stab the, you. Someone will. Yeah. Hey, the the guy that I've told, talked about from my first trip, that dude would come over with a knife. I feel confident. He 
he had some psycho tendencies. So I, I mean, the real question is: Are you going to be treated as as well as Eddie Radosovich was when he was there? Yeah, if you don't time? get invited over to the Nelson family's home for uh, tacos after the game, I think that you've rubbed them the wrong way. I'm literally never treated as well as Eddie is. Like I go to practices at stadiums that I've been to. I don't know for the last 15 years in the spring. We'll go on tour. No one gives a shit that I'm there. But as soon as they see the Eddie, they're like, Eddie, can we get a picture, man? Like, they're so <laughs> excited to be around Eddie. I'm like, man, y'all piss off. Like, whatever. Eddie can't tell you who your 2008 starting corner was, can he? <laughs> no. Fact. Fact. People but, actually no, take pictures of Eddie just standing The The only, yeah, it, it is it has online. become quite a thing on game days. Uh, it The only place I don't think that I'm allowed to uh, show up at is probably Garber, Oklahoma. I think Greg Swain would try to kill me. <laughs> Does he own that town? Is he like uh, I don't know? He was like chirping at me this morning for some reason, and, but he's blocked me on Twitter, so I don't know like when he does. That's but it was pretty funny. It was pointed out to me this morning, and so I had to point out to Twitter that he's probably. Wait, 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 wait! He has blocked you, but he tweets at you all day, all literally all day. That's got to be the lamest of all lames. Like you want to block somebody, fine, do that. But you don't get to talk shit after you've blocked somebody. Like, let it go. Move that, on. I, that's what I said. That That's weak, Greg Swain. But, you know, and Eddie, um, well, we'll get into the uh, Eddie's potential uh, inspirational speaking at a seven-year-old soccer event. Yeah, we'll but, get to um, that. Yeah, we'll get there. We'll get there. Who is, uh, um, who's Los Al playing this weekend? They are playing Corona Del Mar, who is 5-0. I mean, I, that was... When I talked in the preseason to some of my California guys, like Adam Gorney and some of the other guys out there I know, um, it was really Rancho Santa Margarita, which I, I, I kind of wanted to go to. We kind of couldn't make that work and ended up being a bad game to go to. Los Al jumped out early, and then they, they kind of had a rough night. And Malachi, from what I can understand, had probably his worst game of the maybe of his career. So that wouldn't have been the ideal moment to you know stick microphones in everybody's faces. So... Um, but Corona's supposed to be, I mean, like I said, they're five and oh, they're doing something right. Um, and it's supposed to be a pretty, a fairly big league game for them. So we'll, we'll see where that goes, but you would expect Los Alamitos to win. I mean, really between, like I said, Santa Margarita and San Diego Lincoln, those were the two schools that everybody kind of marked on, on Los Al's calendars. As those are the best teams are going to play. So we'll see. Maybe Corona de Mar shocks me and everything, but. When I'm going this far, I do like to go to a game where I'm like, okay, I'm going to get a good interview afterward. Now, sometimes like Florida, when I went and saw Brandon Ennis and Kenyatta Jackson, that was just too good of an opportunity. And whoever won, okay, I'll go talk to them. Um, but it was definitely, um, I, when I go somewhere far away, it's nice to feel pretty good about the chances of a win. Um, and kind of to speak on that and move to the next one. So uh, Friday morning, I'll get up. I'm going to catch another flight out of Orange County, one of the world's just really great airports. I just can't ever say enough good things. Um, and head to Denver and catch Gavin Sawchuck on Friday night. Finally get to see him in person. Um, it, it was funny, kind of like what I was saying. I was talking to him, and he goes, yeah, you know, we're starting district play, and our district's not really that good. And I'm like, I got you, man. I know what you're saying. So we may only get 12, 15 Gavin Sawchuck carries. But I'm gonna guess they're pretty they're pretty explosive. Um, Valor Christian is number one in the state. They're a big time program in Colorado. They're very jinx union. They're just bigger and better than most everybody. There's a couple of teams each each year that can play with them, um, and I, I think they are hitting the part of the schedule where they don't see many of those teams. So it um it, it and also you know obviously everybody knows Gavin. His younger brother Gabe is a promising running back as well get some video of him, get a feel for, you know, what his game's like, and it wouldn't shock anybody if he's no you recruit in a couple of years. Um, that's, just, no, go ahead. I was just going to say, just as far as, like, you know, we have, I guess, are on the back end of four straight weeks where Oklahoma's hosted visitors, and it's been a kind of a who's who list of people that have been coming in. Has there been any type of, I guess, common theme coming out of these visits? I know that it's, you know, the first time that they're able to get guys back on campus uh, in over a year, four games. Uh, have you noticed any type of, I guess, theme among all these guys? I thought it was, 
you know, kind of interesting, like with Patrick uh, Field being able to host Gentry Williams or any of the big name guys, I guess. You know, uh, the thing that really sticks out to me that is kind of continuous is I really haven't seen any of the elite guys come to campus and then they leave in Oklahoma. You know, when I talk to people, it's like, oh, yeah, you know, I mean, he liked the visit, but eh, it's probably not going to work out. Like, there is legitimate optimism and in several cases confidence where OU walks away you know uh, my impression is that they very much feel like they are in a good place um with guys like Gentry Williams the guys like Gabe Dindy um you know you, you go down the list some of these elite Cam Dewberry was another one that left campus and I think Oklahoma really liked where they were with him so they are uh, Devin Campbell sorry I keep coming up with new names but yeah I mean they they've really done a good job hitting the high notes because you guys know there would be for I mean and it's not that they fix this problem or that they won't miss out on some guys because let's be honest Marvin Jones Jr. is probably not coming to Oklahoma but that visit went very well Oklahoma did what they needed to do but that was just always going to be a tough win um but as I look around at some of these guys that I thought also this will be a tough fight I, I think Oklahoma is as good a chance as anybody at Devin Campbell Cam Dewberry and probably lead for both Gabe Dindy and Gentry Williams. So, you know, you get two of those four, great. You get three of those four, you really, you're starting to push into that top six, top five type kind of class when you're landing those elite rivals on the 100, five, borderline five star kind of guys. So, um, I, I just like, it feels like the visits have, for whatever reason, I can't say that there's been a common thread into why they've been so popular. But there definitely is a feeling like OU has found the right answers for a lot of these guys. Um, I'm trying to decide if I want to make a news dump right here or not. Oh, are we ready? Are we finally ready? God, I don't know. You should save it for the board. Let those folks know. This is not breaking football news. Oh. 100%. Oh, well, then maybe I've misread. You, you, Eddie, you and know what is, news we're talking I'm like, about. I'm like, tr- I'm like Spencer Rattler back here in the RPO. I what's have no on, idea what's, what's on, going on. What's all this stuff uh, uh, behind me? I know. That's what I was saying. You think I should save that for the board? Yeah, I don't care. Well, it's, it's a mainstream it's deal anyway. It's your announcement. Well, first off, I did get a call this morning. Uh, telling me that uh, we will be given the keys to our new Sooner Scoop Studios on Friday on Campus Corner. So that's Moving a whole on up. shit show that I'm going to be dealing with. We are uh, opening a office on Campus Corner. Broadcast this- studios, podcasting studios, photo studios. <sighs> it's going to be like when, when you, you walk by WGN in Chicago. <laughs> or the Comcast building. It'll be like... Actually, part of it does look kind of like... Uh, you know, you know where they have the press conferences at Jerry World, and people can look in there, uh, like the, walking through the tunnel and stuff. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Part of it's kind of like that. Uh, it has a giant glass wall. I mean, you've been there, right? Yeah. I'm taking you there. Yeah. Okay, you've seen it. I'm just kind of playing along. Um, but no, we'll have uh, our own podcasting studio, and all you people have been clamoring for us to be on YouTube. That will start happening, uh, and. You all know I went to Josh's house and hooked up all his stuff, and we haven't done shit with it yet, but we will. Um, and we have our NIL deal that's getting ready to... Uh, I'm getting ready to talk about it right now. The last month has been a whirlwind because, you know, of COVID and protocols and all that stuff, and just like Josh has set up, it was kind of a first run to get me ready for this. And so we have signed an NIL deal with Isaiah Thomas. Uh, and it's been a month now uh, that we've been doing this and working on it and building his studio out so he can remotely broadcast. And this is going to be big time. This is not just like two dudes sitting on Zoom talking. It's going to be a full television show production that's going to be on YouTube. Uh, we'll be playing, you know, Scoop... HD highlights. Uh, we'll be talking to him about. We'll be doing post game shows. We'll be doing weekly shows, uh, and it'll just be us getting to know Isaiah uh, and, and a lot more. And I'm very excited about it, just because I don't have to wait for somebody to 
to call on me to ask a single question. We can have an actual conversation talking back and forth about football, about life, about, you know, his interests, uh, kind of who he is as a person. And Josh, I know you've been dealing with Isaiah since he was in high school, probably maybe one of the first recruiting reporters um, that he ever met was you back in the day. Uh, yeah, I, I certainly don't want to go back and air all of our old DMs from back in the day. But, yes, I I can tell you Isaiah was a guy that I found just randomly because I, I literally go through the entire state, and you were, he was just this big, long, gangly kid. And you were like, I don't know what he's going to be, but there's some stuff there you like. And he's I, – I, I love that we're doing this with Isaiah. He's a great dude, always been awesome to deal with. Um, it's, a, it's, and, a, it's a very unique look at two at somebody that – has literally kind of been through it all in a, in through a sense. Through all the stages of a football career right. to this point, yeah. He's gone from guy that was highly recruited. Remember, he, he was a state champion in basketball in high school. Um, lo- still loves basketball. Big Miami Heat fan. Uh, and, you know, was kind of a guy that was just, you know, just a guy for, 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 for a couple of years. Then he started getting more playing time. Then last year... He really became kind of the guy that if they needed to play, this was even before Nick Benito had really broken out, before uh, um, uh, Ronnie Perkins had come back. Like, remember that Iowa State game last year? He got the the strip sack and the fumble recovery that gave him a chance to win it. And then, it, you know, Spencer Rattler threw the interception in the end zone uh, to end it. But the Texas game, I mean, like, and you watch him this year, it's like Eddie has this great video of him where you isolated him in the last game on the interception to mm-hmm. Delaney Turner. Yeah, he was the one that forced uh, Daigie to throw that ball before he wanted to. Yep. And he didn't get a sack. He got a you know, hurry for it, but it, it resulted in an interception. And I know it was third and long, uh, but he's just been one of those guys that continues to make plays uh, and just the sweetest guy. I mean, I'll, I'll tell you a little story about how involved this has been. So... I think I've been to his apartment five, six times to this point. Um, And, you know, there's been all kinds of stuff. I mean, I hate to even say how much money we spent on all this. Tiffany's probably listening. Don't do it. It's going to make me sick. I don't want to think. But, like, just, I mean, like, he's a college kid. Like, people think these, these college football players, like, have all this stuff and, oh, they get paid now. Like, his apartment looks just like my apartment did in college. Like, sure. there's nothing on the walls. Like, he had his jerseys held to the wall with thumbtacks. Like, his old jerseys. Like, I was like, we've got to make a set out of this. So I went and bought him, like, shadow boxes, like, really nice ones at Fanatics. By the way, uh, go hit the link to Fanatics at Soonerscoop.com if you want to help us out. Um, but, like, so we had to design kind of like a set because he's going to be doing two shows a week from in there. But then, you know, I don't want it to be just Zoom because I'm a psycho about everything uh, quality-wise. And so we're, we're doing professional streaming video uh, coming into broadcast studios that eventually will be on Campus Corner. Right now they're in my living room. And we've been testing this stuff, and it didn't work, and I had to change this setting, and I had to buy this. And, I, and so it's like I think every day for a month I was buying some little cable or cord or splitter uh, or trying a different box. Um, trying different software. Like, nobody's ever done anything like this before. So it's the first time we've ever done it. I'm very excited uh, for everybody to see this. We're going to shoot our first episode tonight. Um, and uh, they'll keep on coming throughout the season. And trust me, the last thing I wanted was for this week when we started to be coming off of a loss. So I'm so glad they beat West Virginia last week. Well, you put a lot of work into it. I'm excited to see the uh, kind of the finished product. It's going to be a lot of fun over the next couple of months. I, I think I can speak for Eddie in that I can tell you this will be a good product because Eddie and I have been ready for Kerry to run this for two or three weeks now. We're like, just do it, man. Just do it. And he's like, no, it's not like I want it to be. It's not quite right. And Kerry has, has finally overcome. He, he is ready to roll now. I still need to get a couple of other things oh. on Amazon, but we can do it. <laughs> We can pull it off. Yeah. This, you're, it's people like, are, you're it's, hearing it's life like with a, Carrie right now. It's like uh, a couple weeks ago, mom told us that we were going, or dad, I guess, in this in this instance, we, we could open presents on Christmas Eve 
And at 4.30, we we're like, oh, can we open them now? He's like, wait till 5. Can we open them now? Wait till 5.30. Can we open them now? After dinner. After dinner now. So now we're here. Well, that's like everybody was so bad. Like you said there'd be an announcement. And it's like, yeah, I know. But we had this shit storm of technology and it's not working like we wanted it to. So we got to get this and this and this. And then maybe it'll work. And then we got this, this, and this. And this and this worked, but this did not. And so then we had to order more shit. And, oh, it's just been exhausting. And, uh... I'm, I will take a picture of a setup sometime because it's unbelievable. Um, yeah, it looks great. But it's got, like, teleprompters and all this shit so he can... Like, he literally will be staring at a Zoom screen with a camera behind it. Like, I, I know people don't know all, how that stuff works. Eddie does. Uh, anybody that's been... A, Josh probably is familiar with it as well. And he's definitely going to want one after this, I'm sure. Um, but... They're not too expensive. Tiffany will approve. Um, so yeah, it's been it's been a lot of work. I can't say it's always been fun, but I can say that Isaiah. I want him to know how much I appreciate he's his patience through all this because, I mean, truth be told, a lot of people would just be like, "Dude, you can't get this to work. I'm done. I'm going to do something else." <laughs> so I appreciate no, it's his gonna patience. Awesome. So it's going to be and really I, cool. I, it's going to be our new YouTube channel, uh, so it'll be on YouTube, uh, and you know we hope to like really this is a first step for us. I mean, uh, I know there was so much flash that came out with NIL and you know Texags giving players ten thousand dollars for a mortgage comp or a, a real estate company, and you've seen a little bit of that. And some people have just gone out and got as many people as they can and just done Zoom interview after Zoom interview. We want to make this really good. We want to make this. Like you're watching a television show. It won't be that long, but you know we want to be able to play Isaiah highlights from his last game and have him react to it and tell us what was going on in that play, just like a coach's show. So uh, I'm really looking forward to it. I really think it's going to be good. It'll get better if it's not great to begin with. And we'll probably have some glitches here along the way, but uh, I think in the end it's going to be something good. It's going to be something we can build on. And who knows? Maybe down the road we have five different you know player shows on. Uh, we'll see how the sponsors react to it. Uh, but a lot of that's going to be you know us opening up offices. So we didn't want to take on too much just this first year because uh, there's going to be a lot of work involved in setting up the broadcast studio as well. Uh, so there you go. There's the big announcement. Um, we'll have more on the website, uh, and we'll have the first show on YouTube. You guys will know where to get it on Soonerscoop.com and following us at Soonerscoop on Twitter. Or I feel like we need so the uh, round of applause thing like, uh, they, have on the hard, like they have on the hard line. <laughs> <laughs> so I did go back and look. Isaiah and I's first conversation was almost six years ago now. Wow. Gosh, that's that, crazy. It's just crazy how that's, that time Well, passes. and eventually with your setup, we'll be able to get you on with him. And, you mm -hmm. know, it'll be... We'll just we'll just evolve as we go along too. So oh, I I remember like racing my ass up the Turner Turnpike to go to his uh, army ceremony, oh, uh, yeah, U.S. Army yeah. All American yeah. Game ceremony. It was on like a you know Friday afternoon. It's like oh yeah, we need to go up. To We're that. gonna have to show him that video and see what he says. Uh, I'll tell you what, he looks like a different person today than he does than he did back then. He spent he some, some good time now. in the uh, yeah. weight room. He is a man. There's no now. doubt about that. I went and looked at his, his 2015 huddle profile. He's listed at 6'5", 230. I knew Isaiah then, and Eddie, you were there at the Army thing. That was generous. 230, there's no way. Yeah. He was 210, 215 probably. Because people don't remember, he was a really good basketball player too for a really, really good memorial team that I want to say won state his senior year, if I remember they did. right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I mean, that, like I said, he, so it wasn't just like, oh, he wasn't doing the work. Like he just, he would run it all off in basketball and then have to try to get bigger again. Um, but yeah, what, what he's done with his body is Benny Wiley, like, needs to have a picture of that kid somewhere up in his, in, in his facility somewhere, just to, like, this is what you can do. I mean, like, the, the, he's, it's pretty impressive how much Isaiah's changed himself. It's, Maybe one of my most saddest moments in life every time he opens up the door. And I just see this massive hulk of a man standing there, and I'm just thinking... Me again. Uh, it's just me. <laughs> I need you to go grab all this stuff in the back. <laughs> I did make him grab one of the things because I had to rent a U-Haul pickup truck to take it over there. 
because uh, it wouldn't fit in my car. So. Oh, yeah, there was a whole... I wanted to kill Ashley Furniture at one point throughout this process. Just trying to get a desk. I think I got that You know how call. hard it is to get desks, like smallish desks these days? I've been looking for a desk, and yes, like your desk experience has kind of scarred me into not looking anymore. I was like, okay, I'll just probably do well, that and on I a bye almost, week. I was almost going to run all the way to Frisco to Ikea because I thought they had the perfect desk, and they're so hard to find. Sure. But they were sold out of every, like they have like seven different models of this desk, and they're sold out of That's all funny. of them. funny. So, yeah, it's almost impossible to find a small desk. I learned that throughout this process. And then guess what? When you buy it in Norman, they make your ass drive all the way to Mathis Brothers to pick it up in Oklahoma City. That pissed me off. Oh, you got to go to Whitewater while you're up there. I did drive by Whitewater Bay. Owned, I owned by Six Flags now. But I guess Frontier City's Think owned by Six right. Flags, too. Yeah, something like that. So, anyway, I'm very excited. Uh, it's a new era at Sooner Scoop. Really looking forward to it. Uh, as I said, we'll be doing that tonight. So along with the podcast, post game, uh, as well as the unofficial 40, now you're going to be getting uh, YouTube content. Also, Josh, like I said, he's going to be doing some stuff. Eddie and I have talked about doing mm -hmm. some stuff. Uh, but we're going to get more in the weeds and recruiting uh, with some of the YouTube content. So uh, you can look us up. The page is going to change, obviously. Uh, but it would be a good time to go ahead and subscribe and hit that uh, notifications bell on our Sooner, on our uh, Sooner Scoop YouTube page. For sure. But we'll be putting all of that up on that page. So we're going to be more, not so much just, it, what we have on there now is a bunch of just boring crap from the past, like live streams and stuff. We'll be getting rid of it, and we're going to be really just content-based. Yeah, I think the on. last thing that I saw that we put up there was, uh, and I don't mean to send anybody into PTSD, but I think it was from, uh, what's it called? Peach Bowl, Peach right. Bowl stuff, yeah. and like Jalen Hurts era. We were doing so the live, so live. There's a there have been a lot of interesting comments on that Peach Bowl live uh, stream. I think I'll take LSU in the game. I'll put it that way. <laughs> uh, yeah. So we take a lot of baby steps. We're ready to take the next step. Maybe we should document the uh, the building of the Sooner Scoop Studios. Probably do that. Little BTS. For people, need exhibit to come in. And Just twelve remodel. hours of me building Ethernet cables is what that will be. <laughs> God, boy, that'll that'll bring the subscribers in. Might as well just. Well, it's going to be shirtless, so it. <laughs> well, that'll yes. Because Lord knows, Josh and I aren't paying to turn on air conditioning until that thing is finished. Nope, not happening. We'll be neighbors, right? <laughs> uh, with the O Club. Uh, we are, Carrie, and I, I should go ahead and tell you, we're going to put in a nest so I can regulate the temperature in there. Oh, I'm going to make sure. <laughs> Josh's smart hours. <laughs> It'll be cool every hour I'm in there. Little, But I do all the networking, so I don't know how you're going to keep me from hacking that. <laughs> <laughs> it shows him 78, but it's actually 68. And I know your IP address, so good luck with Shit. that. Shit. Anyway, yeah, uh, lots of, boy, lots of fun stuff to come. Uh, and, you know, what a great week to start building offices than OU Texas week, too. Sure. I get and the good news is, is I no longer pick OU in football games, so we'll start this week against Kansas State. you just going against yes. the spread, uh, you mean? No, I'm picking Kansas State to win the game. Is that South because picks you picked West Virginia? Huh? Uh, No. I just don't know if they're going to win. I I don't know how you trust this team to win. I at they, Kansas I'm State, barely getting it I'm, at home. I'm saying that sarcastically. I think I'll pick them this week. Next week will be the first week that I actually. I don't know. I might pick Texas. You never know. I I'll, I'll be honest. The peace movement would appreciate it. Yeah. If I write stuff, we might have some right stuff now, planned for that as well. I I don't think it's going to use way. I have zero faith in this team. It kind of rounds it all back wow. to like wow. I just don't I don't know what to expect from this group. Like nope. I no. think that the the mm -hmm. like the parts are there. I just everything that we've seen offensively over the last couple of weeks is just lacking so much. I mean, they were they rushed for 57 yards. They guess. could double that line easy. I mean, if they won 35 to 10, I would not be shocked. If they lost 27 to 13 it wouldn't shock me either like i there is no hard line on what this team is 
Yeah, I Other mean, the one thing that you, you don't know. The only thing that I think you can do is just hope that the offensive line looks better. Yeah. And that you have something to build on there. <laughs> I think Gabe said it best. I don't know how they can look worse. Like, I, I would hope that last week was the uh, rock bottom low point. I know Tyrese Robinson was asked today, like, what is life like with Bill Beatonbow right now? Doesn't sound like it's been a fun week. <laughs> Which is, I mean, is good because I, it's kind of like I, I DM'd the scoop group, uh, I think it was Sunday night, like during the playback show. I just don't know how they've gotten to the point where it looks so bad. I think the actual text was, how are they this bad? I just, it doesn't make sense to me. Yeah. We're talking about, it, it's kind of like what we talked about, uh, Carrie, on the post game. We're talking about a guy in a Marquise Hayes that I'm not going to say that he's been like a first team All American by any means when he's been playing, but he's played enough football down there. Like you shouldn't not know who to block. Yeah, you shouldn't not know where to, uh, like who to go. And that's why does it just come down to Rain not getting protection out, or just not calling it out correctly, right? Or like I, I just I kind of lean to the side of like I don't think that. Bill Beatonbow's just lost his ability to communicate with guys. It just doesn't make sense. It's just reaching guys. That's what it comes down to. Sure. Mike Stoops wasn't afraid to communicate. He just wasn't reaching anyone. Yeah. And I don't think that, but I, again, like you talk to anybody that has played for Bill, the first thing that they say is how great of a coach he is, how, how prepared you are right. going into games. Right. And, you know, you listen to guys that know it, just like it doesn't seem like that is happening this year i don't know we'll see the uh like just going back to the rattler stuff too it's like it's i i get it it's not all his fault it it was probably unfair to come in here after the game saturday night and you go back and you look at some of the stuff whether it be like hazelwood cutting off his route or you know i think there's some idea that maybe stogner didn't run shallow enough on the deep ball to mike woods like stuff like that it's like okay that's not necessarily his fault but then you see drake stoops running wide open down the sidelines which was the one kind of just weird answer from him today like saying that it was a bust on west virginia's part but they that you didn't don't take read it like it. it's like so you're just admitting that you didn't take advantage of a bust yeah that was kind of weird but outside of that i mean i don't know i'm nowhere near like i don't think he should be benched i don't think he, they should like murder him yet but it just it's not not what I think a lot of people signed up for. What's funny is I feel better about Spencer Rattler this week than I did last week. Cuz he's and not I don't know home what's in a, front of the students. No, no, no. I mean like when we were doing this podcast last week, I was kind of like, "Boy, I don't know. I am not sold." Now I'm like and I'm not saying that Spencer Rattler is the answer and that he's going to figure it all out. I don't know. But I felt better about this week's performance than I did last week's. Is it different because of the way that they ended the game? I think a little bit. I mean, I I, I do that. think that there is some type of confidence or whatever you want to call it that you can take out of the second half. Uh, it's it's a lot better than them winning the game and him going, you know, six for fifteen, and you know, one for six on the final drive, and they just happened to bust a big play. I know that's hypothetical that you hate, but. I think it's probably a better situation in that regard. Look, I mean, it's there's so many, we've talked about it a lot. There's so many things that are wrong. It's not one person. Everybody's screwing up a little. And that's why I just don't know if it can be a quick fix because there are so many things wrong. Yeah. Yep. But then again, I and mean, I, I, Spencer I, Sanders made up, that defense look very suspect yeah. last week in the first half. This was brought up, though, today as well, and... You kind of got the sense that Spencer Rattler wants more tempo. Yeah, one hundred percent. And I think that's been a good thing for him. And it, I think it's also that's kind of one of those Lincoln Riley failings, like the run game. Like he hasn't done that very much, and I think it's part of him trying to be conservative and saying, "Well, if we go three and out, our defense just you know had a seventeen play drive, so we don't need to go tempo here because that just means we'll get off the field faster." I, I just think to a certain extent with that kind of stuff, though, isn't it like, I guess you just have to jump all the way in on tempo. If that's what's going to help this offense, yeah. even if it means taking something away from the defense, I don't know. Like, I guess that's kind of the weight 
or the the two sides that you have to weigh going in. Well, and that was the thing. I mean, people got upset with Hypo about the check with me stuff mm-hmm. all the time. Like they're kind of getting to that a little bit too much. Like they're looking at the defense and then making changes and then snapping. I would have to go back on the uh, and maybe that's not the best thing. On the for final the drive, line. was there a lot of that? I don't think there was any of it. But like you like you said earlier, getting Mike Woods involved again would be a, a good thing. I don't know what's going to happen with Stogner. You know Drake Stoops is going to be there for a big catch if you need him. And you want to see Marvin Mims more. I think you know more Hazelwood's not a bad thing either. No. I, and I think it was a good thing that they were able to get Stogner at least going somewhat. I mean, even Bra- uh, Braden Wills got into the action yeah. the, on the final drive. They need more of that. And if you have a quarterback that's struggling, I just, I don't know, maybe that's just like a very elementary understanding of offense on my part. But I would think that those guys are the security blankets. Like, if you can't move the ball, you can find an Austin Stogner for a six-yard gain every day. You can find Braden Willis open the mid- over the middle for 15 yards. Yeah. Those are the easy throws. Yeah. It's almost like they just make have made things harder for themselves. But it's like we've talked about. It's like if they don't if they can't figure things up out up front, none of it's going to work. All right. Uh I think that's going to do it for this week. We'll be back Eddie and I for the post game show uh from Manhattan, Kansas or parts what do they say parts there about? So, what a just a miserable drive that is through Kansas. It's just a it's not miserable great. drive. There there comes a certain part where it just seems like you're doing the same thing for about two hours. Yeah. That I'll Flint right. Hills area is yeah. where it kind of starts to get less boring. I don't know. Flint Hills, is that right? That's I'm gonna I'm right? gonna appreciate it though. It's the first time being back on the road in Hills. in a year. That's Flint Hills. First time back on the road in a year, and I I kind of am really excited about it. I like covering games on the road. And I like, I like, I like, I like games covering in Manhattan. games Manhattan. I like covering games at home, but being on the road is just different. I like it. K-State has a great crowd. Yeah. It should be a really lively atmosphere, too. All right. That's going to do, do it. You th- do you, real quick, do you think that there's going to be like any final time in Manhattan, possibly, like how the crowd's reception for Oklahoma is going to be on the road over the next, I guess, couple weeks, just being that? First time that, you know, Rattler will play in front of a full crowd. It'd be diabolical, wouldn't it, if Kansas State fans started cheering, we want Caleb? Yes. That would be amazing. (laughs) I wonder if Flippy Off Boy is going to sit anywhere near. I mean, I think that kid's like in college now. When I tweeted that out back in 2016, Uh he contacted me. He was like a senior in high school at that time. Wow. It's like, that's me. I was like, f***, I'm old. Yeah, he probably is like a senior in college. So, I don't know. All right. see. Should be fun. Looking forward to it. Eddie and I out on the road again. Josh out on the road uh, avoiding the family uh, in two different places. So, looking forward to uh, talking to you guys again next week. Hopefully, everyone in a better mood than after West Virginia, but we'll see. It's going to be OU Texas week. How can you not be in a good mood? Yeah, I guess so. All right, that'll do it. We'll see you guys next week right back here on another edition of the Unofficial 40 Podcast from Soonerscoop.com.